Alrighty, so here's the first part to your review. My plan right now is to use one microphone with the first part, which is yellow, and a different microphone with the second part, which is green, uh, because I don't plan on watching a full video to figure out which microphone sounds best, so I might need some feedback from y'all. If they both sound fine, then that's great, but if there's weird things going on, like it sounds like I'm breathing into it, or I, it sounds like I'm hitting it all the time, or there's weird anything else, I just need to know, because that's not something I can tell when I'm using it, and I don't want to buy some more that are crap. So, here we go. And I don't know that this video will have all of the yellow part in it. I'm going to just go as far as I can until I get interrupted a bazillion times or until the bell rings, I guess, for the end of fourth period. All right, so this number one says, which of the following graphs represents an even function? All right, so if we are looking at it from a visual perspective, a function that is even has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So it sure as it looks like A has got the symmetry with respect to the y-axis. So I like A. Okay, I'm going to hang on to A. We'll look at the rest of them here. B has symmetry with respect to the x-axis plus not even a function. So it's not B. C, it does have symmetry, but it's with respect to the line x equals negative 2, so that doesn't work. And then this function here does have symmetry, not with respect to the y-axis, but with respect to the origin because I can rotate 180 degrees. So this is actually an odd function. So not my answer to that one either. So that means my answer is, okay, is A. All right, so number two, which of the following is an even function? All right, well, I don't have a graph to look at. Guess you could graph it if you want to, but you're not going to have a calculator, so you need to know how to do it algebraically. Remember that for an even function, so I'm going to write this up here. If it's an even function, then f of negative x equals f of x. For an odd function, then f of negative x equals negative f of x. So I'm going to substitute negative x into each one of these. So h of negative x is equal to, well, when I plug in a negative x here, anytime the exponent's even, it's just going to give me x back. So this is still 2x squared plus 4. When I substitute the negative x in here, I get j of negative x. Okay, so when the exponent's even, you get whatever it is that you had before. When the exponent is odd, so there's a 1 there, if I plug in a negative x there, that's going to give me minus 3x, and then plus 1. Here, m of negative x would give me negative 4x, and r of negative x is equal to, this is odd, so that would give me a negative 2x cubed minus 5x. So let's look at our answer choices here h of negative x equals the same thing as h of x does, which does mean that it is even, and that's what we're looking for. So pretty sure my answer is a. j of negative x, well, it doesn't equal j of x because these signs here are different. It also doesn't equal negative j of x because these two terms are the same. So it's an either one. It's not odd or even. Here, m of negative x gives me actually negative m of x, so this would actually be an odd function, so it's not even. r of negative x here gives me negative r of x, which means my answer is a. Okay, so that was interruption number one just then. I'm not exactly sure the last thing I just said. I think I'm going to keep track this time. This was, that was one. All right, so number three, which of the following is an odd function? So again, we have to look at it algebraically because we don't have... Um, a graph to look at. So I'm going to find h of negative x, that's equal to, exponent is odd, so I get negative x cubed, exponent is even, so it's plus 4x squared. So h of negative x does not equal h of x, it also does not equal negative h of x, because this matches here. So my answer is not a, because it's not even or odd. j of negative x is equal to, all right, so when I substitute this in, that's going to give me 3x squared plus 5. So in that one, j of negative x is equal to j of x, which means that's an even function, and I'm looking for odd here. So m of negative x is equal to negative 4x. 
So m of negative x equals negative m of x. So that is an odd function. Still going to check d, because remember, you should always check all of your answers, just in case you looked at something wrong or whatever. Plus, there is one on this review that has two right answers. So r of negative x is equal to negative 7x cubed plus 5. So this is not r of x, it's not negative r of x, so it's not even or odd, so my answer is just a c. All right, so number 5. True or false are these two functions inverse functions. Now this isn't necessarily a difficult question, but when we were doing these, some of you were getting um, mixed up with the rewriting of an exponent and an inverse of an exponential function. So I can rewrite this log function, so it would be 5 to the g of x power equals x. That's rewriting it. That's not necessarily the inverse of it. To find the inverse, you have to exchange the places of x and y, and then you solve for y. So here, our f of x represents y. So if I take this, and I'm going to change the place of x and y, so that means that x would now equal 5 to the f of x power. That's the inverse when you switch x and y. So now to solve this right here, that's when I take the log, right? Or I've got to take the log, and that's going to make this log base 5 of x. Or I rewrite this. I don't take the log. I'm sorry. But to rewrite this as a log function, that becomes the f of x equals log base 5 of x. Or to take the log and rewrite it into this, 5 to the f of x power equals x, and I get this. So these two are what's really the inverse, like this right here. It's not the rewriting of it that makes it the inverse. So the answer to this is true. 5 says, which statement is false about f of x equals log base 3 of x? So it's talking about its domain, so in points and asymptotes, so that means I have to have an idea of what the parent function looks like. So a log parent function, goes through one there, looks like this. So decreasing on its domain. Don't think it's decreasing on its domain, and I'm, so it is continuous on its domain. Okay, well, its domain goes from 0 to infinity. It is a continuous function, um, so that's a true statement. But remember, what we're looking for is false. Pretty sure that one's false. Like, that sounds like my answer, but I want to keep on reading just in case we read the question wrong or read one of these wrong. So it is continuous, which means it's not my answer. It contains the point 3, 1. Okay, so would it contain 3, 1? What happens when you substitute in a 3? Log base 3 of 3 is 1, so the y value is 1, so it totally contains that point. Has a vertical asymptote? Yep, that would be the y-axis, so my answer is A. So I'm looking for the one that's false. Alrighty. So then 6, the graph of this equation. So once again, I want to make sure that I have the parent function in mind. And my parent function of an exponential is going to look like this. Okay, so this is my parent function. But then, this is 3 to the negative x power. When you change the sign on x, that is a reflection in the y-axis. So when I reflect this in the y-axis, it's going to look like this. So purple is my parent function, pink is what that one would look like as a sketch. And so I'm looking where the graph is. The graph is in, fun in, in quadrants 1 and 2. It's the same as the parent function. All right, number 7. The graph of this equation lies in quadrants blank. All right, so this is the natural log. Same kind of looking parent function as a log of any base. So there we go. Something like that. And there is no transformation here, so that is quadrants 1 and 4 which is a D. All right, number eight. Which of the following equations could be represented by this graph? All right, so sure looks like an exponential function, but remember it could be something else that may have gotten translated or whatever. Um, not going to be a log without any transformations because that one's going to look 
like this. And remember, you're not going to get a calculator on this, so you have to know what your parent functions look like. Then if it's a negative log base 2 of x, that means I'm changing the sign on y. So that is a reflection in the x-axis, so it would look like this. And then log, you can't even read that, log base x of 2. So we don't know if that is going to be a, well, if this number right here is greater than or less than um, 1. So we know that if it's greater than 1, it's going to look just like this. And if it's less, okay, interruption number 2. All right, I'm back. Um, so let me just back up a little bit here because I don't know where I was. This is what the parent function of log base 2 would look like. This is what the reflection in the x-axis would look like. And then the log base x of 2. So we don't know if the base is greater than 1 or less than 1, but basically it would look like one of these two still, which is not that one. So, and we want to know which one's represented and not, not represented. And so this is totally an exponential parent function. All right, number nine. The graph of y equals 4 to the x is given. Which is the graph of y equals 4 to the x minus 3? All right, so to transform this, then we know that when you subtract from x, you're actually adding to the x value, so your move, it's a shift to the right, 3. So if I look at a key point, let's go with that one. And I need that point right there to go 1, 2, 3 to the right, but look how we're counting, okay? We're counting by 2s, which means that point right there should end up right about there. So this one, it, it doesn't move, so that's not it. That, I don't know what the heck's going on with that, no. This shifted it to the left. This shifted it to the right. So that was really the only shift to the right anyway, whether you counted or not. All right, number 10. The figure above shows the graph of a quadratic function f with vertices. With it. I'm sorry, I couldn't see that far. I had to walk away from it. Uh, function f with vertex at negative 1, negative 3. If the parabola is shown is reflected in the x-axis, so we are reflecting in the x-axis. And somebody, I mean, Mark got reflected. Somebody asked me today, reflected in. Like, that sounds weird. That's actually the proper way to say it, but it's the same as reflecting it over or across. Um, but I say reflected in a lot. You may not even realize that. Just it's the, It all means the same thing. So it's shown, is reflected in the x-axis. What would be the image of the vertex after the reflection? All right, so when you reflect something in the x-axis, the x value stays the same, and all you're doing is changing the sign on y. So we still have to have a negative 1. Well, you know what? There's only one that still has a negative 1 value, and it's negative 1, positive 3 there. It's just going to reflect up to here. And honestly, if you just knew that much, that that's what the reflection is, and it ends up somewhere up here, there's only one that even has a negative x value. Of course, you don't always luck out that they're always that easy, but sometimes they are with multiple choice. Alrighty, number 11. It says, the figures above show the graphs of quadratic functions f and g. Which equation demonstrates the relationship between the two functions? All right, so looks like from the answer choices there that there's just some sort of transformation, right? So let's look at first what's happening with y. Just to take it from the y value from here to here. Here it's at 0, 0. Here it's at negative, this is at negative 3, negative 3. That means it is a vertical shift down of 3, which means I would need a minus 3. There isn't even one of those. Then I also have to shift it to the left 3, which means I would actually be adding it. So the this part looks good. This one does not because it's a shift to the left. But then it's shifted down 3, which means this should be a minus 3, not a minus 2. So none of those work. Your answer is D. All righty. So number 12. It says, which of the following functions has no hole, 1, 0, 
and a horizontal asymptote and two vertical asymptotes. All right, so hole, let's talk about a hole first. If it has a hole, then that means that I can reduce the numerator and denominator. So I can knock these out, which means this one does have a hole. It says no hole, okay? That has a hole. So does that one. So really this is the only right answer. Again, that doesn't necessarily, it's not always necessarily that easy to knock everything out, so we got to make sure we know how to look at the rest of it. And um, so I do have two vertical asymptotes, because after I have simplified and reduced, then I still have two of these that I can solve for in the denominator. So it has two vertical asymptotes. It has a horizontal asymptote because it is bottom heavy, and it has one zero because it only has, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, I don't know how bad that sounded in the microphone. Um, X minus three, there's only one zero there, so my answer is D. Alrighty, number 13. Let f of x equal 5 to the x plus 2 power minus 4. Which of the following is not a solution to the equation? Alrighty, so if I substitute in 0, that's going to give me 5 to the second power. 5 to the second power is 25. 25 minus 4 is 21, which means that works. So it is not my answer. Substitute in a negative 2, it's going to give me 5 to the 0 power, which is 1 minus 4 is negative 3, which works. Not my answer. B, got substitute in 2, that's going to give me 5 to the 4th power. So 5 to the 4th power is 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, times 5 is 625. So that's going to give me 625 minus 4, which is 621. So this is not an answer which means, I mean, it's not a solution, which means it is my answer. But I should always check them all. So now when I substitute in the negative 3, this is going to give me 5 to the negative 1 power, which is 1 fifth, minus 4, which is the same as 1 fifth, minus 20 over 5, which is going to give me negative 19 fifths, which is not negative 21 fifths. So this is not an answer, which means... D works as well. So there was two right answers on 13. All right, number 14. F of X equals this stuff here. And then F of X is positive for what X values? All right, so here's where we need our sign chart. So I put on my number line here any asymptotes because this isn't rational, so we don't have that. But my zeros, so I have a zero at negative three, I have one at negative one, and I have one at three. Now this is a, an, I have an odd number of exponents, it's a cubic, right? Not an odd number of exponents, but the exponent is odd. Uh, this is a cubic. So since it's a cubic, I should, and it's negative, like if it was positive, it would go like this, but this is negative, so it's in behavior looks like this, right? And I know that there are no, it's not tangent anywhere because I don't have any double roots, and um, there's no asymptotes because it's not rational. But I can go ahead and draw this in before I even look at the signs. We're going to talk about the signs a little bit, but then I'm going to show you how you really knew that before that happened as well. So if I take a negative 4, okay, substitute in a negative 4. I know overall I start with a negative sign, right? And then neg this would still be negative, and then this would still be negative, and this would be negative. So when I multiply all those together, overall this is positive. I could continue, which sometimes you need to, especially when things get weird and a little bit weirder with the rationals. But at this point, I really already knew that because I knew that this is a zero and I know what my end behavior looks like. I already knew that it was positive over here because of all of that. And if you know what the shape looks like, it should look something like that, but oh my goodness, a whole lot better. Then when I come in here, I can go ahead and know that, pretend like this is my x axis, those are my zeros. And since my end behavior looks like it does, it has to come down, come back up, and down like that, 
don't even care where the maximum and minimums are at all. So what I know from that, or again, I can substitute in things and, you know, and look at the signs, same thing works. But from here, over here, it's positive. In between these two, it's negative. Here it's positive, and here it's negative. What I'm looking for is that it's when it's positive. Okay, so it's positive when x is less than negative 3, and it is positive when x is between negative 1 and 3. So it is 1 and 2. All right, number 15. Which of the following statements are true about function f, whose graph is shown above? All right, so I'm looking for what is true here. Make sure you pay attention to those little words, especially in problems like this. So it says f is increasing for negative 6, from negative 6 to negative 4. So here's negative 6, here's negative 4, and um, so when you're looking at domain-wise, it's like, oh gosh, I can't draw it's like all of this, right? So I'm capturing that and that, and it is increasing the whole time. So I like that. F has two zeros, all right? Well, there's a zero here, there's a zero here, and guess what? All those are zeros, and so is that. So that's like really an infinite number of zeros. So that is not true. Don't like that one. And then f is decreasing from negative 2 to 0. All right, well, from negative 2 to 0, it's not increasing, it's constant. I'm sorry, well, it's not increasing or decreasing because it's constant. So I don't like that one either. So the only one that is true is 1, so the answer is A. All right, 16. Which of the following graphs are decreasing over the given interval? Decreasing from negative 3 to 4. All right, so from negative 3 to 4, I would definitely say that this one is decreasing, so I like that one. From negative 3 to 4, I would definitely say that that is decreasing, so I like Roman numeral 2. Then from negative 3 to 4 here, not decreasing because that is increasing, then it begins to decrease, so I don't like 3, so it is 1 and 2 only. All right, number 17. Let's use the graph of f of x to determine which statement is false. So I'm looking at which one is false. The domain and range of this function are equal. All right, so my domain is from negative infinity to infinity, my range from negative infinity to infinity. So that one's true, which means it's not my answer. The domain of y equals x squared is the same. So y equals x squared is like this. The dom domain of that is all real numbers. The domain here, all real numbers. So they are the same. So I like that one, which means it's not my answer. The range of y equals the absolute value of x is the same as the range of f. So absolute value of x looks like this. The range here is from 0 to infinity. The range here is all real numbers. This says that they're the same. That is not true. So that is my answer. One of them, at least, i got to read D. f is continuous for all real numbers. It is definitely continuous, so the only answer there is C. All right, number 18. The figure above shows the graph of the function f. What is the minimum value of f? Minimum value. So my minimum here, absolute minimum would be right there. Remember the minimum value is the y value, so that is a negative 4. The fact that it's at 3 doesn't mean anything. So the answer is b. 19. Based on the graph of the function f above, what are the values for x for which f of x is decreasing? Okay, so it is decreasing from here, still decreasing, doesn't start increasing, still decreasing, even though it changes a little bit, it starts increasing here. So it goes from negative 5 to positive 2. 
So from negative 5 to positive 2, that would be D. Alrighty, number 20. And the figure above shows the graph of the function f. If f of a equals negative 5, which of the following is a possible value of a? So it's saying that the y value is negative 5. So here's my y value of negative 5. That happens here and here and at all of these. Right? Well, if you look at 2 and 4, or at these two right here, it doesn't hit right on those points. Those are like some sort of, the x would have to be some sort of fractional value. None of these are fractional values. But all the way from negative 8 to negative 6, all of those have that value. So the only answer here is negative 6. And another graph is kind of tiny. I had to put on my glasses. All right, next one. This is the figure above shows the graph of the function f. What is the maximum value? So your overall maximum is here. Remember, we're talking about values. Those are y values. So yes, x is 0, but that doesn't matter. And so we have this function here. It says, what are the maximum and minimum values of the, this function? Now, I want to remind you that this clearly, well, it clearly stops here. We assume, we're assuming that it stops here. If these had arrows and the function continued, then it would not have a maximum or a minimum because infinity doesn't count because infinity is not an actual value because you can never reach it. So my maximum and minimum values then are here. My maximum here is at a positive 25. So maximum of 25, that's the only two that have those, so I can mark that off. My minimum here, remember the x is 15, that means nothing, is at a negative 15. And so the answer is b. I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to stop here on this one. So this will finish part one.